That's the definition of addiction. Because you can know that whatever it is that you're addicted to is ruining your health, your life, your family, and you can't do a damn thing about it because the biochemistry of the addictive substance alters your behavior so that you can't do anything about it. That's the definition of addiction. So just say no, ain't gonna work. The systematic confusion and conflation within our society of these two words, pleasure and happiness. Now, they're both positive emotions. We like both of them. We want both of them in our lives. Pleasure is short-lived, happiness is long-lived. Pleasure is visceral, happiness is ethereal. You know, pleasure you feel in your body, happiness you feel above the neck. Pleasure is taking, happiness is giving. Pleasure is experienced alone, happiness is usually experienced in social groups. Pleasure is achievable with substances, happiness is not achievable with substances. The extremes of pleasure, whether it be substances or behaviors, so substances like cocaine, heroin, nicotine, alcohol, sugar, or behaviors, shopping, gambling, internet, social media, porn. In the extreme, all lead to addiction. Every one of those has an aholic after it, right? Shopaholic, sexaholic, talkaholic, right? Whereas there's no such thing as being addicted to too much happiness. And finally, number seven, pleasure is dopamine and happiness is serotonin. Two different biochemicals, two different neurotransmitters, two different chemicals that are used in the brain to convey information, two different sets of receptors, two different mechanisms of action. Understanding the difference between these two is exactly what you need to know and exactly why we're in the mess we're in today. So why do we care? Here's why we care. Dopamine, is an excitatory neurotransmitter. When it's released from one neuron to the next, which happens in an area of the brain called the reward center or the nucleus accumbens, it's a specific area of the brain which we can see with fancy MRIs and PET scanners. When dopamine is released, it excites the next neuron. Now that's important. And the reason is because neurons like to be excited that's why they have receptors in the first place, but they like to be tickled, not bludgeoned. Chronic overstimulation of any neuron leads to neuronal cell death. So overstimulation of neurons is not good. So to protect themselves, the second neuron, the receiving neuron, has a option B, a fail-safe, a method of self-defense. What it does is it downregulates the number of receptors that it has for that transmitter, specifically to try to limit its exposure. That's on purpose. It does that on purpose. So what does it mean in human terms? What it means is you get a hit, you get a rush, receptors go down. Next time you need a bigger hit to get the same rush because there are fewer receptors and the receptors go down. And then a bigger hit, and a bigger hit, and a bigger hit, and a bigger hit. So every substance, every behavior that stimulates dopamine has as its endpoint addiction. That's why it matters. So that's what's going on with dopamine. However, serotonin, this other neurotransmitter, the neurotransmitter of contentment or happiness, if you will, is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It doesn't stimulate the next neuron, it actually puts the next neuron to rest. So can you kill it if you put it to rest? So do you have to downregulate your receptors? No, so serotonin does not downregulate its own receptor. But there's one thing, so you can't overdose on too much happiness, but there's one thing that downregulates serotonin, dopamine. 
So the more pleasure you seek, the more unhappy you get. 